Uh, he played in the NFL. He was a second-round draft pick. Uh, and he scouted in the NFL, helped build the Panthers and Seahawks defenses up. And he's our friend at the NFL Network, Fox Sports analyst, too. Bucky Brooks, haven't had him on for a while. He's joining us. Okay, so you're a scout. And I do believe a losing quarterback can be more impressive than a winning quarterback. And I look at asking a rookie with a bad old line and no running game to throw 61 times trailing. And I'm way more impressed with that performance than I am Baker throwing with a great running game, a lead and throwing 23. Am I nuts? No, you're not nuts. Joe Burrow looked like he's expected to look as the number one overall pick. Uh, what you're doing early on in these assessments, you just want to see do they flash the talent that led you to believe that he could be a top 10 pick, better yet, a number one overall pick. And he did that. I think the most impressive traits that Joe Burrow displays has little to do with his physical ability, his poise, his leadership, his maturity, his ability to continue to battle when his team was down. Those things are encouraging. And then at the end of the game, after the game, when he goes in and talks to the reporters, he says all of the right things, the things that you expect to hear from a franchise quarterback. I think if you're the Cincinnati Bengals today, you feel really, really good about your young QB1. If you're a Browns fan and I like their game plan, do you have to say, listen, we're just better when Baker throws about 23 times and come to that realization? Because I thought Baker was about as good as Baker can be. And I think last night's kind of his ceiling. One big throw, ran pretty well, let him throw on play action. The more you ask a Baker, you ask Baker to throw 61 times, it's man overboard. I don't think he's Burrow. So if I'm Cleveland today, I should I look at that and go, this is kind of what he is. Let's just own what Baker is. Yeah, that's the blueprint. I think that's what we have to do, and that's what we have to get comfortable with. Regardless of where Baker Mayfield was taken, he was taken number one overall, and so normally – We heap a ton of expectations on the quarterback taking that high, but that's not who he is. What Baker is, Baker Mayfield is, is a high-end managerial type quarterback, and there's nothing wrong with that. If anything, I think the Cleveland Browns can kind of take a page from the L.A. Rams playbook and treat Baker like the Rams treat Jared Goff. This is a team, the Cleveland Browns, loaded at running back, Kareem Hunt, Nick Chubb. You have OBJ and Jarvis Landry on the outside. Austin Hooper can control the middle of the field, and the offensive line is playing well. The only thing you need Baker to do is buy into the game plan, understand exactly who you are, manage the game, let the playmakers do the work. You'll win a ton of games, and oh, by the way, you may get paid like Kirk Cousins and Jimmy Garoppolo did because they're quarterbacks that are very, very similar to the way Baker Mayfield is when it comes to a ceiling. So it's very interesting. The hit rate on young quarterbacks, and we've talked about this, they got more snaps by 15 years old than the Drew Bledsoe, the Warren Moon era. These kids now have 10,000 snaps by 12. More of them make it. More of them are playing early. More of them are good early. There's fewer busts in the last five years. And I just said the joy. Dwayne Haskins' last three games, 111 passer rating, 65%, five TDs, no picks. A game that won't, you know, the country won't watch a ton of is Arizona, where I think we all admit Kyler Murray's a hit. If Dwayne Haskins plays another good game this weekend, is it too early for us to go, Ron Rivera doesn't need to draft a quarterback? Like, when will be the time that Bucky Brooks, a former scout, if you look at Dwayne Haskins this weekend, win or lose, I don't care. But can, if he comes out again and performs, do you feel like we got our guy? How many do you need to see? Well, I mean, I think in general, the the magic number is two years. So 32 games is normally when you make those assessments. But here's what I'll say about Dwayne Haskins and why I'm in on him. Having known Dwayne Haskins and Kyler Murray since they were in high school is doing the Elite 11 thing. They both were very, very solid. The thing about Dwayne Haskins, and this comes from Urban Meyer. Urban Meyer said he was the best 707 quarterback that he's ever been around. When he stepped on campus at Ohio State, he was ready to go. Had to work through some maturity things, but... From the talent standpoint, he has everything. I think this offseason was great for Dwayne Haskins. I think he stepped into the league and may have taken his standing for granted. He had to work. Ron Rivera made him work and earn the position. So now we see a slimmer Dwayne Haskins, a Dwayne Haskins that did more work in the offseason. Consequently, we're seeing a better Dwayne Haskins when he performs and I think a lot of people didn't look at Dwayne Haskins at the end of the year last year they got distracted by the fact that he got caught taking that selfie at the end of the Detroit Lions game and they dismissed how he played 
He played pretty good at the end of the year. This is just a continuation of what he started doing at the end of last season. So you 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 taught me this whole thing about the tractor trailer thing about some quarterbacks. Very few they can pull a team, <laughs> but generally the team pulls them. And I was saying about Magic Johnson. Magic Johnson inherited Kareem as a rookie. That's not normal. You generally inherit a bad team. Michael Jordan had a bad team and the wrong coach. And they're both great players. But Dak wasn't living the real his first two years in the league. He had the best O-line. He had a former NFL quarterback head coach. He had Jason Witten. He had a great running back. And the division was kind of a mess. I look at Dak now with all the offensive line injuries, no tight end, now greater expectations, and I'm like, okay, this is what the NFL is like. <laughs> this, this is what it looks like. You may have two undrafted tackles starting Sunday. Can Dak win with this reality? Yeah, he can because he's done it the last couple of years. I think here's the thing. It's a myth and a narrative that's out there about the Cowboys offensive line being a top five offensive line. A couple of years ago, yes, that was the case. But they haven't been that version of the, the front line that we've seen in a while. And then when you go and you look at the weapons that it has around him, he has enough on the outside to be able to get it done. Uh, C.D. Lamb helps give them another weapon to go with Amari Cooper and Michael Gallup. Ezekiel Elliott is still terrific, a top five running back. But, yeah, there's more pressure and more expectations on Dak. And he is going to have to work around a shaky offensive line. Part of the reason they struggled last week offensively the offensive line got dominated by the Rams and Aaron Donald. Yep. He has to find a way to be able to work around that. Some of that will be him. Some of that really will fall to Kellen Moore. Can they put together a game plan to mask some of the deficiencies that they have up front? But, yeah, the expectations are ridiculous for what people want to see from Dak Prescott. I'm still buying him, and I'm still saying he's the best quarterback in the quarterback class that he came out, and that includes Carson Wentz and Jerry Goff. The – um. You know, it's interesting. These, You've never been as high on Garoppolo, uh, I don't think, as I have. Uh, but what I can't deny is when I see a head coach who's supposed to be a brilliant offensive mind take the ball out of his hands, I can't. There's nothing I can do about that. So he's got a, they got cluster injuries at wide receiver. They're a mess at wide receiver. Kittle's even banged up at tight end. Are, do you believe Kyle Shanahan this morning truly believes in Jimmy Garoppolo after week one? I mean, I think, look, I think it goes all the way back to the Super Bowl. I mean, you go and look at the two-minute drill. They had the ball, they had an opportunity to move the ball down the field, and they elected to run the ball before they put it in the hands of Jimmy Garoppolo. Here's the thing about Jimmy Garoppolo and Kyle Shanahan and that system. That system creates opportunities for Jimmy Garoppolo. The system is one of the best systems that I've ever seen in terms of the misdirection, running game, and the pass game, and how they blend everything together. The problem with Jimmy Garoppolo, when you watch the tape, Every week he misses two to three big play opportunities that Kyle Shanahan has dialed up. For whatever reason, Jimmy Garoppolo can't see it, he can't anticipate it, and he won't let it go. And so as an offensive coordinator, it's frustrating because there are only a handful of opportunities that you get to dial it up to really create these scoring opportunities. And because Jimmy Garoppolo can't cash it in, it just makes it very, very hard to call a game around him. I believe this week, though, Cal Shanahan will be at his best because he knows he has to call the perfect game for Jim, Jimmy Garoppolo to succeed without George Kittle. You'll see Jimmy Garoppolo fa- play phenomenal because Cal Shanahan will put the pressure on himself to create the opportunities for Jimmy Garoppolo to succeed. All right. Is Brady going to win? This? Brady's going to win this week. Carolina's defense is not very good. Their secondary is bad. Yeah, Brady's going to win this week, but I think the Tampa Bay Buccaneers may have a little buyer's remorse. If you go back and look at the last 10 games that Tom Brady has played, Jameis Winston has been a better player, and I don't think Tom Brady can turn it around. Completion percentage, yards per attempt, passer rating are all in the bottom five of the league during that span. Look, I love Tom Brady for all the things that he's done, but I don't think he will ever return to being the player that we saw in New England. Man, that was you're you're worse than Bruce Arians. Guy just chewing him up and spitting him out there. Holy moly. I mean, I'm just saying, like loving eyes will never see there, Colin. <laughs> Bucky Brooks, it is good seeing you, my man. Catch Bucky Jonas Knox Saturdays, Fox Sports Radio, four hour show, four to eight. Good seeing you. Hey man, thanks for having me. Boy, Bruce Arians and Bucky Brooks, they're just taking shots at my boy Tom. What is going on? Hi, everybody. Thanks for watching. Subscribe here to get the latest from the show. 
Also, be sure to check out more of the best clips from The Herd or go watch a few segments from other shows on FS1.